Today you will discover what the missing piece is for the creation of artificial general intelligence and why this guarantees that your behavior will change completely in the very near future. I know, it sounds like that exaggerated or scary talk that pops up on your cell phone all the time promising the end of the world or technological miracles. It is normal to be suspicious. But pay attention, the person who made this prediction was not just anyone, it was Ilya Sutskever, one of the fathers of all this technology, in an interview that just came out and is exploding on the internet right now. And since we do not like complications here, I am going to chew up all this difficult information and explain exactly what he said in a simple way so you can get ahead and understand what is coming. If one of the fathers of technology says that the world will turn upside down and that we will see unprecedented things soon, what is your immediate reaction? Total excitement or butterflies in your stomach? Comment down below. I'm ready or so scary before I tell you the details. I want to measure your courage now. Thank you for the comment. Now let's get to the facts. Let's start by understanding how this technology has evolved until now. In the old days, the so-called machine learning, which is how computers are taught, worked in a sort of trial and error way. People kept testing things, throwing ideas around to see if any cool result came out. It was test and miss. But then they had a great idea about scaling, that is about increasing the size of everything. Remember when that famous program that writes texts appeared, the generative pre-trained Transformer 3? Suddenly everyone realized the secret was to make everything giant. It is curious to see how the words we use change the way we think. Scale or increase is just a word, but it became an order, a strong command that told all technology companies what to do. The logic was simple. Let's increase everything. But increase what? The initial training of the computer? They discovered that this was the magic recipe. The big insight was realizing that if you mix super powerful computers with a mountain of text and information from the internet, the result was guaranteed. And if you increase the quantity of computers and information, the result got even better. The big companies love this, of course. For them, it is a perfect scenario because it is an investment that has almost no risk. Think with me. It is much harder and riskier to spend money trying to invent something totally new from scratch where you need geniuses racking their brains. It is much safer to simply buy more information and faster computers. You know that this training will make the computer better and it seems from what people are saying that the model called Gemini and others have found ways to make this training yield even more. But there is an obvious problem in this calculation. At some point, the information runs out. The quantity of texts and books on the internet to train these artificial intelligences has an end. And then what do we do? Either we invent a new and more potent training with a different recipe, or we try to teach the computer by learning from its errors, or we try something totally new. The fact is that now that we already have gigantic computers and a lot of processing power, we are returning to the phase of having to research and invent and not just increase. Ilya divides recent history into phases. From 2012 to 2020, it was the research phase. From 2020 to 2025, it was the phase of increasing the size that race to see who made the biggest model. But now the doubt is if we increase the size by another 100 times, will everything magically transform? thinking that just increasing the size will solve everything might not work anymore. The computer is already giant. I believe we are back to the drawing board only now with super powerful machines in our hands. And here enters the part that scares or enchants, depending on how you look at it, how artificial general intelligence will impact us humans. Ilya has a very specific vision about what this super intelligence is. Many people think it would be a finished mind that comes out of the box already knowing how to do every job in the world. But it is not quite like that. His proposal is different. Imagine a mind capable of learning to do any job. Do you perceive the difference? Once you have this learning program, it enters the labor market in the same way a human employee would enter a company. And then we have two possible paths. In the first, this program is so efficient that it becomes better than a human, including in the task of researching and improving artificial intelligence itself. 
This creates a cycle where the machine improves itself, but even if that does not happen, there is a second path. Imagine that you have a single model or several copies of this model spread around doing different jobs. They are learning all the time, gaining skills that we would take a lifetime to learn. Only they do this all at the same time and share what they learn. You end up having in practice a collective intelligence that becomes super intelligent because no human being can join their mind with another to sum up experiences in this way. And speaking of joining forces to grow fast, if you want our community to become as smart as these machines and continue receiving this chewed up content, do your part now. Leave a like and leave the hype. This shows the algorithm that we are also learning at high speed. The logical result of this would be the economy growing very fast. If you have an artificial intelligence that learns fast and can be copied by the millions, the force to put this into the economy will be huge. Of course, they might create heavy laws to break this and it is quite probable. But the idea of an absurd leap in money and production is very real. The only doubt is the speed. On one hand, we have this super efficient digital worker. On the other, the real world is big, complex and full of rules. Things in the real world move at another speed. But the countries that have easier rules for this technology will certainly grow faster. Now, Ilya makes an even deeper prediction about society and safety. He believes that most people, including those who work in the area, cannot visualize what is coming because it is very different from our day to day. He bets that we will see unprecedented behaviors. For example, he predicted years ago that rival companies would start working together for security reasons. And look, we are already seeing movements of approximation between big companies like Open Artificial Intelligence and Anthropic. He also says that as artificial intelligence becomes more powerful and visibly more powerful, governments and the public will demand action. But there is an important point. Today, the machine does not seem truly powerful because it still makes silly mistakes, invents things. But a moment will come when it will pass a real sensation of power. When this happens, the attitude of companies will change completely. They would become very afraid and careful with safety. That way of let's do it anyhow and fix it later will end. Another interesting reflection he brings is about how to control artificial intelligence for it to be nice. Everyone focused on the idea of a machine that improves itself. But Ilya suggests something better. Building a machine that is made to care about any life that feels things. He says it might be easier to make a machine care about any being that feels pain or joy, be it human or animal, than just humans. Because the machine itself at some level will start to feel things too. It is the idea of empathy. We, humans, have neurons that make us imitate feelings. We feel sorry for an animal suffering because we put ourselves in its place. If the machine has this same system of understanding the other as it understands itself, Empathy can arise naturally. Returning to the question of researching versus increasing the size, Ilya touched on a point about the current market climate. The phase of increasing everything made everyone do the same thing. The result is that today, we have more artificial intelligence companies than original ideas. You know that saying that ideas are cheap, what matters is execution? There is truth in that, but if ideas are so cheap, why is no one having new ideas? The problem changed. In the 90s, people had brilliant ideas but did not have computers to prove that they worked. The problem was the lack of machines. Today, there are plenty of machines. We have gigantic computers. To prove a new idea, you do not necessarily need the biggest computer in the world. The AlexNet network, which changed everything in this area, was made with two simple video cards. The original study that gave origin to the chat Generative pre-trained transformer used at most 64 old video cards. So to research and invent, you do not need an entire building full of computers. Of course, to build the best final product to sell, you need brute force. But to have the genius idea, what is missing now are the ideas, not the chips. To close, Ilya makes an essential distinction about the term artificial general intelligence. This term was born almost as a response to the term narrow artificial intelligence 
The one that only played chess and did not know how to do anything else. People wanted a machine that did everything. Current training kind of gave us that. A model that is reasonable at almost everything, but then they exaggerated a little. Think about it. A human being is not an artificial general intelligence in that classic sense of knowing everything. We are not born knowing everything. Uh, a human has a base of skills, but a lot of information is missing in our heads. We depend on learning all the time. So if we create a safe super intelligence, it will probably look more like a genius, 15 year old adolescent, super eager to learn. You do not hand over the hospital for him to operate on the first day. You say, go study medicine, go learn to program. Putting this super intelligence in the real world will involve a period of trial and error, a process of learning in practice. It will not be an instant download of a ready professional. It will be the arrival of a mind capable of learning anything. And this changes completely the way we must prepare for the future. It is a much more natural vision and honestly makes much more sense than made up stories usually show. Now that you know that super intelligence will not be born ready, but rather like a genius adolescent who needs to learn in practice, would you have the courage to let this digital intern take decisions in your life today? Or do you prefer to wait for him to mature? Right there in the comments, would you trust or distrust? I want to read the best theories. So if you want to follow the growth of this digital adolescent with us, and prefer reality over the fear of fiction, you already know what to do. Leave a like and leave the hype. Let's watch this future happening together.